Well, welcome back to our beginner's guide to City Skylines 2. In this episode, I want to spend some time talking about the development tree. Uh, City Skylines 2 now has a development tree that lets you choose and customize how your city will develop and what technologies you want to pursue. This is different from City Skylines 1 in which as your city grew and your population grew, you would hit population milestones which unlocked certain technologies and buildings and services. So what I want to do is I just want to spend some time talking about this because I want to make sure that you understand and that you're being careful about what you're unlocking. I want to make sure that you're unlocking services and buildings that you can actually use and that you can actually afford because some of these buildings are quite costly and I don't want you to, to use a development point on something and then realize man I really can't use that right now because it's just not going to be affordable for me so let's spend some time going through these I don't want to tell you in what order to unlock things I just want to kind of go through each of the different categories and that way you can make an informed decision as you're going through uh, the different milestones and unlocking things. So let's start with roads. More, most important, um, you can make a good argument that City Skylines 2 is a traffic management simulation more than anything. So this is a tree where you're going to be spending some time investing in, in unlocking some things. Early in a city, what you're trying to do is you're trying to make money. So for two development points, you can go the route of parking areas. That's going to allow you to set up parking lots in the city. And now you can start making some, some money. I would not go much further than parking areas, underground parking and automated parking. That's, that's much further into this, the, the life of your city. So I would start with parking areas and go no further when it comes to parking. The game gives you one small roundabout, but for one development point, unlocking uh, medium and large and extra large roundabouts is not a bad way to go. It's going to help you with traffic flow. And then you can go to advanced road services. I would not necessarily put down the advanced uh, road service building, but you need to unlock this in order to move towards large roads. I think you're going to get more use out of large roads than highways, but that's, that's really up to you. But you can use large roads and I think get much more use out of it. From there, I would I do not see the need, especially in the early part of your city, in going into intersections in Grand Bridge. So when it comes to roads, I would be looking to unlock roundabouts, advanced road services, large roads, and parking areas. When it comes to electricity, electricity, you can go in a couple of different directions my recommendation would be to go in the direction of unlocking the gas power plant. You're going to need two development points to unlock it. And then that way you can put down a gas power plant. And it is a somewhat affordable building. Although if you have made a connection to an outside connection for electricity, you can hold off on doing this for a while. But you can either go in this direction or you can go in the direction of the geothermal power plant. Keep in mind, in order to get to geothermal power plant, you have to unlock emergency battery station and then the geothermal power plant. And then when you get there, what you'll notice, the gas power plant is less expensive to purchase and less expensive as far as your upkeep than the geothermal and the gas power plant is going to generate more electricity than the geothermal. So I think that is a better direction to go in. 
the, the gas power plant. But that's really up to you. But I would not, until much later into the city, go towards solar or hydroelectric or coal or nuclear. Water, early to mid game, you really don't need to do. You already have basic water unlocked. Water treatment plant is in the event of polluted water. But if you've already placed your water in a strategic way, you won't be running into that for quite some time. And the advanced water pumping station is just an advanced version of what you have at the beginning of the game. So water and sewage, this is a particular part of the development tree that you can hold off on for a while. Healthcare and death care. The crematorium is for one development point is a good thing to unlock because your cemetery at some point, and it's gonna take a while, but your cemetery will start to fill up. The hospital is good because your clinic is only going to get your city so far as far as healthcare is concerned, but the hospital, two development points, and the hospital is quite expensive. So just keep that in mind. I don't want you unlocking the hospital and then realizing that you can't afford it. So when it comes to healthcare and death care, I would be looking towards the crematorium and then maybe much further into your city looking at the hospital. Garbage management, very similar. You're going to be looking at the incinerator plant at some point. The incinerator plant will help to burn off your trash, but what you're going to find is when you go to unlock the incinerator plant, it is costly and it's also going to have a pretty expensive upkeep. So your landfill is going to suffice for quite a while. And then the recycling center helps to keep individuals happy. But I think this is more of a mid-game item. And then the industrial waste processing is for much more advanced cities. Education and research. Um, early game, I would be looking to spend one development point on the college. And then at a later date, the university. Here, if you are in the United States, look at the college the way you would look at a community college. This is the equivalent of gaining an associate's degree, a two-year degree, where the university is where you're going to get that four-year degree. But the college does a very good job on the early portion of your city of getting your, your residents up to a nice education level because the university is not inexpensive as well. So if you look at the cost of the college and you look at the cost of the university, you can have two colleges for the cost of the university and the ongoing upkeep is is more than the college fire and rescue this depends on how you are playing your first couple of cities i would suggest your first couple of cities do not have disasters just to help you get into understanding the basics of starting a city but if you do have disasters enabled, then you are going to want to think about the small emergency shelter. It's one development point. If you have disasters enabled and you're playing on a map that has lots of forest area, then you're going to want to look at a firewatch tower and also a firefighting helicopter depot. But the firewatch tower should suffice. But my recommendation would be your first city to two or three cities, play without disasters, get a good feel for how you can get your economy going, keeping your people happy, and then you can start to get into disasters. The firehouse is 
is automatic is is unlocked for you but you can spend two development points on the fire station and this is another one of those buildings that is is surprisingly expensive and the ongoing upkeep is is quite steep as well police and administration when it comes to this what i would be looking at is the welfare office the welfare office when you read up on it it is talking about helping low income citizens from a financial support but it really helps to lower the likelihood of ongoing crime your people will at some point complain that they do not have a police headquarters but the welfare office if you have it placed and maybe two of them placed with your basic police station you can you can have a really good chance of having low to no crime in your city people will complain about not having a police headquarters but at least know that you're not running into an out of control crime situation in your city city hall central bank these are two things that really their purpose is to help you as far as getting a better um, uh, uh, loan rate if you're needing to go towards the city hall and central bank because of loans that is an indication that maybe something is going uh, a bit awry in your city that you're needing to take out lots of loans because loans radio, in this city host, are a bit We're predatory and i'm not a big fan of of the way the loans are set up in this city transportation you automatically get when you get to the right to that milestone you automatically get taxi cabs and buses for your early game i feel that is sufficient you would go towards train if you're wanting to start with cargo that's the reason why you would want to go towards train same thing with water but as of right now, until we get more patches, exporting is a bit bugged, for lack of a better word. So unless you're watching this at a much later date, and more than likely I will update this, I would not be unlocking train or water solely for cargo purposes. It doesn't work the way you, I really want it to work right now. So when it comes to transportation, I would definitely be thinking seriously of staying with just the taxis and the buses for your early game. Parks and recreation. Parks really help with land value. Doesn't seem to help with happiness. It helps more with land value. And once you start going in that route, you're going to need a park maintenance building. I would go in the direction of a large park. If you're going to do it, you can do the park maintenance building and a large park. Or you can go park maintenance building and a sports park. I wouldn't go much further than those. The large sports park or a tourist attraction. I would save that to a little bit later into your gameplay. This is a development tree that you can hold off on for a while. Communications. You're going to be getting some things automatically unlocked that you can take advantage of. So from a telecom standpoint, you're going to get a radio mast once you hit Tiny Town. And a radio mast can be upgraded and take care of your citizens' needs for quite quite a while you can also at tiny town get access to mailboxes and post offices those items can keep your citizens happy for a while but what i find is they seem to be 
more conscious of the fact that they don't have access to internet more so than mail capabilities. So if, if I were going in that direction, <clears throat> and remember, these are unlocked at Tiny Town. You don't have to spend points. Be looking. I would be looking towards the radio mast. But just know, once you hit Tiny Town, those are things that are unlocked for you. But that's kind of the direction that I would go in. So roads, I would be spending a lot of my development points with roads. Electricity is good to focus on. Water and sewage, you can hold off on for a while. You can potentially hold off on your hospital, but crematorium may be the latter part of the early game. Garbage management, you can hold off on that until more into the mid game if you'd like. Education and research, the college is about the extent of what would be unlocked or where I would use my development points. Fire and rescue, uh, the fire station potentially at some point. Police and administration, definitely the welfare office. Police headquarters is is quite expensive, but welfare is is worth its weight because of it's going to give you two benefits from a financial standpoint for your individuals and a uh, a lowering of crime. Transportation, I would hold off on transportation for a while. You're going to have buses and you're going to have taxi cabs, and the taxis work wonderful. Parks and Recreation, same situation. Um, you could go in the direction of park maintenance and large parks, but this is one where you can hold off for a while. And then Communications. Your Communications items are going to be unlocked. The ones that you're going to get the most use out of are going to be unlocked at Tiny Town. Some of these development points, you would find out potentially that you spent development points on something that you can't use or can't afford so just wanted to spend some time going through the the development tree offer my thoughts i don't want to like i said i don't want to put it in a particular order it's really up to you your play style what you're trying to accomplish with your city but i just want to save you from using a development point on something that you either can't afford or can't use or both but that wraps up the development tree we will see you for another episode of our beginner's guide to city skylines 2 take care <laughs>